On May 16th, 2022, Bite Beauty posted the following to their Instagram. The graphics read, we have some news to share. To our incredible community, we are sad to share that Bite Beauty will be closing later this year. Thank you for the past 10 years of love, growth, and fun. You have always been our ultimate inspiration. Bite Beauty products are now 50% off. The time is now to stock up on your faves at Sephora.com or BiteBeauty.com. The good news, with nine locations and more on the way, Lip Lab, our custom lipstick experience, isn't going anywhere. Stay tuned for more exciting news to come. The caption reads, We're so grateful for our Bite community and your continued support over the last 10 years. Bite Beauty is closing, but for all you beauty lovers, Lip Lab is still growing and mixing up crave-worthy lipstick. To stock up on your faves before they're gone, shop Sephora.com and BiteBeauty.com. This is yet another example of a beauty brand closing that we were all sad to see, but is it really unexpected? Let's take a look. So I love doing deep dives into brands when they close, go out of business. I think it's really fascinating to see what was kind of the nail in the coffin. And with Bite Beauty, it's a couple of things. Some that were ultimately out of their control and others that I think were just mistakes made along the way that kind of accelerated their decline. So let's dive on in. If you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe. I put out new videos every single week. And thank you to one of my subscribers who requested this video. I hope you like it. <laughs> so one of the frustrating things in looking into this and trying to figure out where Bite Beauty's earnings were was that there was nothing, nothing I could go off of. With Becca, it was a little different. I did go through Estee Lauder's annual report. That's made public to everyone, by the way. You don't have to be a shareholder. And I could see that there were three brands that Estee Lauder was watching that were in decline, and Becca happened to be one of them. If you're curious, Bite Beauty is owned by Kendo, and I believe Kendo is under the LVMH umbrella. Most brands at Sephora typically fall under that umbrella. If you're not owned by them, you're probably owned by Estee Lauder. And uh, if you're an independent brand, hey, good for you, you're a rare one there. And I couldn't find anything in their annual report about it. I searched high and low, I checked press releases, but nothing about Bite Beauty nothing about them being in trouble, just vague statements about Christian Dior and all the other things that they were going to do with Lux Beauty, and I was like, oh, all right. I guess what we'll have to do instead is speculate. Quick disclaimer, all of this is speculation based on my own arrogance. I did get my MBA, and I'm going to flex the hell out of that throughout this video, but at the end of the day, I'm just going off of what I've seen the brand do over the last 10 years. Some things are going to be easier to point to than most, but ultimately, this entire video is just me saying my thoughts out loud. Who knows? I could be entirely wrong, and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. So let's dive on in. Bite Beauty was founded by Suzanne Langmuir. She's an interesting person. She's really kind of the eternal entrepreneur. We're going to get to her more in a bit. But when she founded Bite Beauty in 2012, it was barely in her leadership before it was acquired by Kendo in 2014. So she held the reins for two years and now she's on to other things. We'll get to that in a bit. It was pretty successful at Sephora. It was basically an entire lip brand. You had lip glosses, lipsticks, liquid lipsticks, lip care products. There were other products too. The multi-sticks were quite popular, but most people knew it as a lip exclusive brand and that's sort of how they built their identity. Their focus and what they touted in their marketing was products good enough to eat, i.e. using ingredients that were safe on the lips. It kind of caught on in marketing. I remember Safia Nygaard did bake Bite Beauty lipsticks into a cake because they were lipstick ingredients that you could eat. One of the problems with that, someone who did have Bite Beauty products, hello, is that they do go off pretty fast, and if you have a large collection like I do, you kind of have to use it or lose it. Moving into 2019, Kendo acquired a couple of brands, and they seem to be moving towards a vegan focus. You'll notice this with a couple of brands that they acquired, what was then KVD Vegan Beauty, eventually just rebranded to KVD Beauty. It did seem like Kendo was trying to corner the market in exclusively vegan products. 
And this was a trend that was emulated by other brands, namely Milk at Sephora, but other drugstore brands like CoverGirl did have vegan lines. So this seemed like a trend that would make sense to jump onto. I saw a blog post in November of 2019 saying that it was difficult to get a hold of a lot of Bite products. The user was having trouble purchasing their Agave lip mask, and a lot of products were either super on clearance on Sephora's website or just completely sold out. And it was officially announced on January 10th of 2020 that Bite Beauty was becoming fully vegan, which means that they had gone about from November of 2019 to January of 2020 with a limited, if not completely unstocked line of products. They were just clearing out space for them to introduce a completely vegan line. I don't know that people felt a certain way about it. Some people were probably like, oh, this is excellent. I can finally purchase products from Bite. Some people really adhere to veganism just outside of their diet and with the products that they use. I think other people might have been curious to try it, but I do think the way that they did it was not great. From the Fashion Network, on January 10th, Bite Beauty will launch the new vegan formulations of its current lip products, particularly its Power Move Creamy Matte Lip Crown and Agave Plus Intensive Lip Mask to kick off the brand's transition to producing only vegan formulations of its popular cosmetics. So here's the thing, Bite had so many different products, and they're only starting with two? This meant that a lot of people's favorites were left behind. The French press lip glosses were a huge favorite. I remember a lot of people really missing the shade Dirty Chai. The multi-sticks were nowhere to be found. It was just two lip products. But don't worry, there's more. Outside of its popular lip products, the brand will further broaden its portfolio with the launch of the Changemaker Complexion System a three-step line of longwear skin products that mark Bite Beauty's debut complexion products. Available from January 10th, the system includes two primers catered to different skin types, 32 shades of medium coverage foundation, and eight talc-free shades of pressed powder. Prices range from $36 to $39.50. Now here's the thing. I think adding complexion products was a very smart move. It's almost like they knew that people wouldn't be wearing lip products for a very long time. Where I think they went wrong is introducing only these products and leaving everyone's favorites behind. They did say that they were working on vegan formulas, but people wanted these products now. They had been out of stock for a few months, and people were getting antsy. They wanted their favorites back, they wanted their shades back, and to a lot of people, it may have felt like Bite was saying, yeah, I know you miss Dirty Chai, can I interest you in a foundation? I think this could have gone better. Let's take a look at a brand I previously mentioned, CoverGirl. Now the brand has not gone completely vegan, but they do have a vegan line. And I think if they had gone with that, there would have been a smoother transition. There wouldn't be products that people miss that went out of stock or went away completely. There wouldn't be this wait to see what the new formulas would be. There would still be the original formulas and products people love, but a vegan line that customers who prefer that could turn to. And I'm not even saying that you have to make every single product vegan, but I think adding a vegan alternative to the Agave Lip Mask, for example, adding a small collection of lip products that are vegan, that would be really clever. And having the Changemaker Complexion System as vegan, I think that's also a great way to introduce it. You can keep the products that people love while providing alternatives. I think that shows that you're listening to both customers, if that makes sense. But people were not happy. I have seen so many complaints on Reddit saying that the Agave lip mask just isn't the same. Not only is it not the same, it is actively terrible. It doesn't work like the old formula used to, and it does nothing to keep lips moisturized. With almost 10 years in the industry at that point, people had found their favorites and were now seriously missing them. The complexion line may have been nice, but it was no replacement for products that people had been using for years. A lot of people felt like Bite had really rushed this change in order to compete and be trendy, as opposed to thinking it through and really listening to their customers. And then, everything else happened. Suddenly, no one was wearing lipstick, and all of the lip formulations that Bite had previously been working on to make fully vegan 
it kind of didn't really matter. No one was wearing lipstick anyways, so who cares? And this is one of the things where I think it's not Byte's fault. No one could have foreseen this kind of thing happening. And especially with smaller brands, when we have something so catastrophic on such a massive scale that is still going on to this day that has really affected supply lines to such a deep extent, that is so beyond your control. I really don't hold that against brands, especially ones that are a little tinier and maybe don't have the reserves to stay afloat for two plus years. It might have been the final nail in Byte's coffin, because they did announce that they are closing, and if you want any of those formulas that aren't even original, well, I guess now's the time. But it is not the end for Bite Beauty's founder, Suzanne Langmuir. Like I said, she is an eternal entrepreneur. After Kendo acquired her brand in 2014, she waited a few years before launching a brand incubator, SL & Co in 2019. The SL Co Instagram and social media presence is really interesting. They have not updated since 2019, but that doesn't mean that they haven't been launching brands here and there. Anne Hydra was the first to come out. It is a skincare brand that relies on waterless products. So far they only have one product, their waterless cleanser. It's a clay product that you foam up cleanse your skin with. I haven't seen any mention of launching other products, but that one appears to be doing pretty well, and the brand has sustained itself for three years at this point, so who's to say? What a lot of other people are excited about is the brand Lixer. This seems to be Langmuir's filling the hole that Bite Beauty is leaving in the industry. There are currently three lip balm versions, and a lot of people are looking at it and going, could this potentially be the agave lip mask replacement that I have been searching for. And I don't think so, but I think it might be close. So let's compare the ingredients side by side. And they all seem to have similar core ingredients compared to the original agave lip mask. But once you kind of go down through the list a little bit, things start to differ. I will say though, if you are missing your bite agave lip mask, it can't hurt to try something from Lixer, Perhaps in the time it took for her to sell Bite and found Lixer, she might have been able to tweak the formula a bit, make it what she wanted. I will also say, as somebody who is a huge fan of lanolin, the Hanalee lip treatment, also not exactly the same as the original Bite Agave lip mask, but very nice. Would highly suggest. So what does this mean for brands going forward? I think it teaches us a couple of lessons. Number one, plan your transitions accordingly. What may have a uh, bit bite in the foot was the limited amount of product rollout that they were able to do. I think that has more to do with manufacturing than anything. It can be difficult to suddenly shift your entire line to vegan, so they were probably rolling out products bit by bit but I don't think that was a smart market move. I do think that brands going forward, if they do want to commit to going fully vegan, they will have to do it product by product and not all at once, or create a vegan line much like CoverGirl did. Furthermore, I think we're gonna have a lot of brands no longer specialize in one specific thing, but really broaden their concepts. Bite was known for their lip products for reasons beyond their control, that ended up being the final nail in the coffin, and I think it taught other brands that they needed to really diversify the products that they carry. And it is always sad when a brand goes out of business. I always feel for the people who are losing their jobs or people who it was their dream to work here and now they need to find something else. So if you are in that position, I do really feel for you. And that's where I'm gonna end the video. What do you all think? of Bite closing down. Do you agree with my analysis? Do you have anything else you'd like to add? I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!